All right. So let me know if you can hear it clearly. Steve Hartman learned this on the road. Can you hear it? Yes. Inside the county courthouse in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Can you hear it, Miguel? Yes. Okay. Okay. Would if you would like to play, now would be a good time. This <laughs> whatever I've done, I've just messed everything up. What I can't believe it. Okay. Please play. Okay. Let's go back to this slide. Let's see if it'll play now. There we go. Sometimes the best way to help someone who has fallen into a hole is not to throw them a rope, but to climb in. Steve Hartman learned this on the road. Inside the county courthouse in Fayetteville, North Carolina, Judge Lou Oliveira made headlines with an unusual decision. You may be seated. A few years ago, Joe Cerna was arrested for drunk driving. As part of his probation, he wasn't allowed to drink. So when he lied about a recent urine test, the judge felt he had no choice. I gave Joe a night in jail because he had to be held accountable. It was just one night, but as he entered the cell, Joe says he knew it would be one of the longest nights of his life. When I walked into the jail cell and they closed the door behind me, I started feeling this um, anxiety, but it came back. It came back, the flashback. Retired Army Sergeant First Class Joe Cerna did three tours in Afghanistan and has two Purple Hearts to show for it. The Green Beret survived an IED and a suicide bomber. But he says his scariest moment was the night he was riding in a truck with three other soldiers. What happened? We were, we were following uh, the creek and uh, the road gave way. And uh, the vehicle went into the creek. Truck started filling with water. Yeah. All hope was lost. Trapped and unable to move, Joe felt the water rising past his legs, then waist, then neck, until finally it stopped at his chin. How many guys got out of that truck? A lot? Yeah. Just one. I don't know, how many souls do I have? Joe says it still haunts him. So I suffer PTSD. Among his issues, a fear of being in small, cramped places. I knew what Joe was going through, and I knew Joe's history, and he had to be held accountable, but I just felt I had to go with him. I, I felt I had to go with him. And so, a few minutes after Joe was locked up, Judge Lou Oliveira surprised the man he sent to jail by joining him for the entire night. We meet both, and uh, we talk about a lot of things. We talked about our families, and the walls got further apart. The walls just got, they, they, they didn't exist anymore. He brought me back to North Carolina from being in a truck in Afghanistan. But that is almost the same thing. This week, Joe promised the judge no more mess ups. I don't want to have an error. It's not how law and order usually works. I'm sure. But sometimes jail is not what a man needs. Sometimes the best sentence is compassion. Thank you for me. Steve Hartman. On the road in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And compassion he knew. So I hope you guys were able to hear that whole thing. Did you? Yes. How awesome was that, Miguel? I mean, that is that is uh very touching. That was cool. It was amazing, right? The fact that the judge because I mean you see this guy and you you know, I mean, just like us, you know, we're sinners. And we struggle, you know what I mean? And we know that Christ became our sin for us and he's there for us with an outstretched hand. And I just, I love this example. When we look back at that verse and, and we see that scripture, it says, blessed are those who keep justice and he who does righteousness at all times. All of us, after hearing the story about this man, would want to let him go. You know what I mean? Like he's been through so much. He's done so much for our country. 
you know, he's got two purple hearts, but the judge did the right thing by keeping him accountable. But in my opinion, he showed righteousness by going there himself and sitting with that guy. And I just, I was looking through different stories, ironically, for to try and find something about a police, a policeman who was doing some type of act of righteousness. And it was because of Michelle's comment that I came across this, this video of this judge. And I, I agree with Michelle. I do think that that is, uh, you know, a great category to, to go along with that scripture. And I think that we need more like that. I really do. I know that we're, we're missing this in our culture with, with some of our judges, but there are still people that are out there, which I believe that was an act of righteousness. I just loved it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Let's move on to 106. The waters covered their enemies. So this is still in chapter 106. We're talking about how everything led up to this moment about the, you know, Pharaoh chasing after Moses and essentially Israel, all of Israel, right? So now we see the crossing of the Red Sea, how the waters had dried up is what how we left off to now the waters covered their enemies. There was not one of them left. Then they believed his word. They sang his praise. They soon forgot his works. They did not wait for his counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tested God in the desert. He gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. When they envied Moses in the camp and Aaron, the saint of the Lord, the earth opened up and swallowed Dathan and covered the faction of, of Abiram. A fire was kindled in their company, and the flame burned up the wicked. So do you remember that that particular part when we were reading um, Samuel and Exodus and Leviticus? I believe maybe it wasn't in Leviticus. It, was in, it definitely was in Samuel, and it was in Exodus. But when yeah, the people, uh, remember when there was a coup where they were like, oh, how come God only talks to you, Moses? And, you know, uh, uh, what was her? Miriam and Miriam and Aaron. And they 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 basically said, you know, if God speaks to us, then, you know, let it happen. And Moses says, all right, well, why don't you come here tomorrow and the earth will show. And the earth showed by, remember, a great sinkhole opened up below them. And so that's what that's speaking about there. The earth opened up and swallowed Dathan and covered the faction of Abiram. A fire was kindled in their company. And the flame burned up the wicked. Then, I, I believe this is then, then they made a calf in Horeb and worshiped, worshiped the molded image. Thus they changed their glory into the image of an ox that eats grass. They forgot their Savior, who had done things, who had done great things. That should be capitalized. <laughs> who had done great things in Egypt wondrous works in the land of Ham, awesome things by the Red Sea. Therefore, he said that he would destroy them. Had not Moses, his chosen one, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath, lest he destroy them. So are are, are we done with the shortcomings of Israel? If For those of us who remember, no, we're not. Then they despised the pleasant land. They did not believe his word, but complained in their tents and did not heed the voice of the Lord. Therefore, he raised his hand in an oath against them to overthrow them in the wilderness, to overthrow their descendants among the nations and to scatter them in the lands. They joined themselves also to Baal of Peor and ate sacrifices made to the dead. Thus, they provoked him to anger with their deeds. And a plague broke out among them. Then Phineas stood up and intervened, and the plague was stopped. Do you remember what they were doing? What the people were doing? This, this should, this we've used this picture before, but um, do you guys remember or no? Yeah, they, they what, what they said. They got up and uh, <laughs> and played. Yeah, they went out whoring mm -hmm. with. Uh, the non-Israelitis women, they were they were doing the wrong thing, presumably right outside 
of the tabernacle. And this guy just had enough and knew the depth of the sin that was there. And he rammed a spear through them both. Remember, he, he ran it through and through. Mm -hmm. And that's when the plague stopped. It says, then Phineas stood up and intervened and the plague was stopped. And that was accounted to him for righteousness to all generations forevermore. They angered him also at the waters of strife so that it went ill with Moses on account of them because they rebelled against his spirit so that he spoke rashly with his lips. They did not destroy the peoples concerning the Lord, concerning whom the Lord had commanded them, but they mingled with the Gentiles and learned their works. They served their idols, which became a snare to them. They even sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons and shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan. And the land was polluted with blood. Thus they were defiled by their own works and played the harlot by their own deeds. I have that bolded there, guys, because I'm, I just... I, first of all, I don't want my view to be your guys' view. I want it to. I want you guys, when you read, to kind of develop your own thought process when it comes to these things. But the more I have been reading the Bible, which we've been doing it together for a long time now, the more I see that our faith is shown through the evidence of our life around us, right? You, you will know a tree that bears good fruit. You know what I mean? Because no good tree bears bad fruit. We, we see all those instances. And so we see here in this scripture, it says, thus they were defiled by their own works and played the harlot by their own deeds. They may have been called Israel, but they were joined to Canaan. And the way we know that, regardless of their name, is because of the way they acted. They let their kids get sacrificed and burned and sizzled on the iron as babies, you know, willingly. And I think when we have people out there that say, you know, I'm a Christian, I love Jesus, you know, and yet they're out doing something similar, that there, there should be some questions involved. And again, that's not our place. God is the one who does the judging there. But I do think that there is some discernment on our part. So I'm just going to move on from there. Therefore, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against his people so that he abhorred his own inheritance and he gave them into the hand of the Gentiles and those who hated them ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them and they were brought into subjection under their hand. Many times he delivered them, but they rebelled in their counsel and were brought low for their iniquity. Continuing on in 106, like I said, it's a big one. Nevertheless, nevertheless, you want people ask us how merciful is your God? Think about everything God did, starting with Abraham until this very moment when they had been giving up their kids to be burned in worshiping, in whoring to another God, a lowercase God. Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry. And for their sake, he remembered his covenant and relented according to the multitude of his mercies. That's how merciful the God is that we serve. He also made them to be pitied by all those who carried them away captive. Save us, O Lord, our God, and gather us from among the Gentiles to give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. Blessed be the Lord, God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting and let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Love that chapter. If you ever wanted to get a summary of Abraham until, you know, basically the um all the way through the Exodus. That's a good, that's a good chapter to, to see. Moving on to 107. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And gather out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south, 
They wandered in the wilderness in a desolate way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distress. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city for a dwelling place. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to all, I'm sorry, wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. But who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound in affliction and irons, because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High, therefore he brought down with down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distress. Again, mercy. Continuing on. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death. He broke their chains in pieces. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in two. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, were afflicted. Their soul abhorred all manner of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distress. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his work with rejoicing. Those who go down to the sea in ships who do business on great waters, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commands and raises the stormy wind, which lifts up the waves of the sea. They mount up to the heavens. They go down again to the depths. Their soul melts because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man. And they and are at their wit's end. Then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brings them out of their distresses. He calms the way. He calms the storm so that its waves are still. When did that happen, Miguel? In the sea. When he rebuked the sea. When Jesus rebuked the sea. Do you remember what the guys said in there? Well, they, were, they were afraid. They were afraid. Who, is, who, is, who is he? Who is this guy? Who is this man that even the... The sea, the waters obey him. That's right. But before that, they said to him, Lord, do you not even care that we're oh, perishing? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and where was Jesus? He was sleeping. He was sleeping in the boat. He wasn't even concerned. You know why? Because he, he speaks it into an existence. So I just, I, to me, this is, this is something messianic, even though it's not titled messianic. It's talking about something yet future because Jesus lived this experience. He is the one who calmed the storm. Then they are glad because they are quiet, so he guides them to their desired haven. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works. <laughs> to the children of men, let them exalt him also in the assembly of the people. And praise him in the company of the elders. He turns rivers into a wilderness. And the water springs into dry ground. A fruitful land in bar into barrenness. For the wickedness of those who dwell in it. He turns a wilderness into pools of water. And dry land into water springs. Then he makes the hungry dwell. That they may establish a city for a dwelling place. And sow fields and plant vineyards that they may yield a fruitful harvest. He also blesses them, and they multiply greatly, and he does not let their cattle decrease. When they are diminished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow, he pours contempt onto princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. And we know where that happened, right? 
I'm thinking of chat Daniel. Remember Nebuchadnezzar? Is this not mighty Babylon, which I have created? Boom, struck down with madness. And wandered around till his beard was wet with the dew and his nails were like long talons because they grew. Right? I, I just, I see that there. And he causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Yet he sets the poor on high, far from affliction, and makes their families like a flock. The righteous see it and rejoice, and all iniquity stops its mouth. Whoever is wise will observe these things, and they will understand the loving kindness of the Lord. 108. This is a short one. A song, a psalm of David. Oh God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Awake, lute and harp. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples, and I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your mercy is great above the heavens, and your truth reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory above all the earth, that your beloved may be delivered. Save with your right hand and hear me. God has spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice. I will divide Shechem and measure out the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is also is the helmet for my head. Judah is my lawgiver. Moab is my washpot. Over Edom, I will cast my shoe. Over Philistia, I will triumph. Who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me to Edom? Is it not you, O God, who cast us off? And you, O God, who did not go out with our armies? Give us help from trouble, for the help of man is useless. Through God, we will do valiantly, for it is he who shall tread down our enemies. 109. Yeah, 109 is the one that I'm going to break away, guys. Um, this one's cool. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. Do not keep silent, O God of my praise. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful have opened up against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They have also surrounded me with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. In return for my love, they are my accusers, but I give myself to prayer. Thus they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Set a wicked man over him and let an accuser stand at his right side. So I have a little side note I want to read real quick. And this is basically, I. this is what I wrote today. This song of David as a, or the other day, this, this song of David as song to be sung feels to me like he has had a vision or an experience that mimics the future events of Jesus. And this is what I mean by that. If you were to go over to Matthew chapter 26, verses 39, and then verses 47 through 49, this is how it reads. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will but as you will. And while he was still speaking, this is later on that night. And while he was still speaking, behold, Judas, one of the 12 with a great multitude with swords and clubs came from the chief priests and elders of people. Now his betrayer had given them a sign saying, whomever I kiss, he is the one sees him. Immediately he went up to Jesus and said, greetings, rabbi, and kissed him. Go right back up here. We see the chief musician, the Psalm of David. Do not keep silent, O God of my praise, for the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful have, deceitful have opened up against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They have also surrounded me with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. I re in return for my love, they are my accusers, but I give myself to prayer. I mean, it's almost verbatim to me, that whole gets them, get the uh, Garden of Gethsemane interaction. The emphasis I have right here on the bolded part, which is thus they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love, is that we don't do that. Let's not be those people who reward 
reward what someone does for good with evil. It's wrong. Okay? Because now we see what David says, what his request is, is to that person. Set a wicked man over him and let an accuser stand at his right hand. When he is judged, let him be found guilty and let his prayer become, let, I'm sorry, when he is judged, let him be found guilty and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few and let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. Let his children continually be in vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also from their desolate places. Let the creditor seize all that he has and let strangers plunder his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy to him, nor let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Let his posterity be cut off and in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered before the Lord and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be continually before the Lord that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth because he did not remember to show mercy, but persecuted the poor and needy man that he might even slay the broken in heart as he loved cursing. So let it come to him as he did not delight <coughs> in blessing. So let it be far from him as he clothed himself with cursing as with his garment. So let it enter his body like water and like oil into his bones. Let it be to him like the garment which covers him and for a belt with which he girds himself continually. Let this be the Lord's reward to my accusers and to those who speak evil against my person. But you, O God, the Lord, deal with me for your name's sake because your mercy is good. Deliver me. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. I am gone like a shadow when it lengthens. I am shaken off like a locust. My knees are weak through fasting, and my flesh is feeble from lack of fatness. I also have become a reproach to them when they look at me. They shake their heads. Help me, O Lord my God. Oh, save me according to your mercy, that they may know that this is your hand, that you, Lord, have done it. Let them curse. But you bless. When they arise, let them be ashamed. Let your servant rejoice. Let my accusers be clothed with shame and let them cover themselves with their own disgrace as with a mantle. I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth. Yes, I will praise him among the multitude, for he shall stand at the right hand of the poor to save him from those who condemn him. Okay. I have a couple comparisons here where I'm referring to the references from Bethany Verrett. This 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 gal has done this. It's pretty cool. Her website goes all through the comparisons of what is considered a messianic title or a messianic statement and then where that is fulfilled in Jesus, obviously Jesus being the Messiah. So Psalm 109.4, it says, but, I, but in return for my love, they accuse me, but I give myself to prayer. May his days be few, may another take his office. So Luke 23 says, and Jesus said, for Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then in Acts 1.15, it says, in those days, Peter stood up among the brethren, for it is written in the book of Psalms, let another take his office, and they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. So there is, and I don't know how much I, I buy this, but there is this strong comparison that what Jesus was going through, what David was talking about was reference to Jesus and Judas and seeing the penalty for what Judas did and, and all those different things that go along with it. What I'd like to do is stop this share and navigate over to well, what let me share okay is the bible open for you guys no it's still in the comparison no okay. i see her 
Yeah. Okay. Your screen. Okay, you don't have to yell at me. I'm not. Turn your TV down. <laughs> can Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, this is Psalm 110. This is the last chapter for tonight. It's a Psalm of David. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power. In the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning, you have the dew of your mouth. The Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He shall execute kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the nations. He shall fill places with dead bodies. He shall execute the heads of many countries. He shall drink of the brook by the wayside. Therefore, therefore he shall lift up the head. Oh my gosh, I don't have enough time. Okay, so here's the homework, Miguel, and whoever's watching this. Here's the homework. I believe that this is a messianic song. If I, go, if I go over to, I'm, we've heard this before, right? The yes. Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Uh, who quoted that? Well, David, David said it first and then uh, it's in the New Testament also. That's right. You know who quoted that? Jesus. When they questioned Jesus, and I think they were questioning about his fatherhood. And he says, why does David say to the Lord, my Lord, if he's his yeah. Lord? Remember, there was that whole interaction. So yeah. if we go to commentaries and we look at this. Is it this one? Whoops. Okay. Right here is the one that jumps out to me the most. It says, David speaks of the Messiah as my Lord. The inference as to the deity of our Lord is incontestable. So what I want you guys to do for next week is I want you to, to look at how Psalm 110 speaks about the Messiah and what the importance of Psalm 110 was. So, see how this all ties to Christ. It is only seven verses. There is plenty of material out there. So, read Psalm 110 a few times and see what the cross references are and see how this ties directly to Jesus. And that'll be our homework for now. We're done. I mean, it's, it's already six o'clock now. So we'll we'll call it quits here because I don't have enough time to go through the the slides and stuff that I have um, dedicated to this. So we will talk about it next week and then we will continue on plugging away. We have uh, forty more chapters before we're done with the Book of Psalms. So on that note, I'm going to shut down the recording and I will close this out in prayer. If it allows me to...